Okay, now that we know how to access the admin dashboard and log in, now we can get started on uploading content onto the website. So, first things first, we are going to create some content. That can also be accessed from the admin dashboard, or the navigation, rather. So, under navigation, you can either go to create content, or if you somehow get lost and can't find your way back, then you can type in node slash add. Now nodes are how Drupal, was just what Drupal runs on, they're basically just how content is displayed, like the, kind of like a branch to the website. So by saying node, you're saying that you're going to specify a node, but since you don't necessarily have a content yet, you're going to go node slash add. Just Maybe an easier way to remember it, or maybe made it more hard. Okay, so note slash add brings us to this page. And this displays, um, looks like, seven different types of content. The one that we're going to focus on in this tutorial is page and web form. Um, other ones that are commonly used are probably image and story. As far as I know, poll, form, topic book page don't get used that often so let's start with page page is basically what we use all the time with creating um, our nodes so say we wanted to create a new page like a new mission page we could type it in here and then a cool thing that we added was a module called WYSIWYG, which is basically like an HTML editor. Before it was installed, your text editor would look like this, and it was very annoying because you would have to do the HTML by hand. But now that we have the module installed, which I'll go over what modules are in the next tutorial, we can do things like this and we can actually see what it'll look like without having to deal with the plain HTML. So once you have your content, your title, and your body, you can look at the other options included with managing your content, such as publishing options. You can promote it to the front page if you like. You usually don't do that with pages. More, You would do that with story content, just because those are more in you know, blog form. So, definitely make it published, unless you don't want it to be. Then you can adjust your comment settings, like if people can comment in or on it or not. So there's read, write, read only, and disabled. We're going to leave it disabled. Um, the other things aren't really that important. With input format, if you do have more complicated HTML going in there, you would switch it to full HTML. And this may be for only professionals, but if you have any PHP going in there, you can change it to PHP code. And this is just to ensure that it actually shows up when you use it. So you can preview it, or you can save it. We're just going to preview it because we don't intend to keep this page. So that's what it looks like. Mission, like that. Actually, let's go ahead and save it so we can see a URL example. So when we save it, it takes a second to process. It will look like this, like some of the other basic pages. And to edit it again, say there was a typo or something else, just simply click edit. And this is the way it is for all of the links that are currently up here. If you see something that you need to edit, just press edit. And if you notice in the URL, it says node 17. This is basically keeping track of all of the nodes that are currently on the pages. So there's 17 pages of content, or 17 nodes, on the website at the moment. Um, were I to try to link any of these to this page, I would have to make the path URL node 17 in the menus page, which I'll go over in another tutorial. So that's how you make a page content. Let's go over how we would make a web form now. So we'll go to node add again. Okay. 
okay? And this was actually a module that was also installed, again, going over modules later, but basically they're added features that you can put into your website to make it more functional. So, web form, we'll go ahead and click it. Basically allows you to create, you know, basic contact forms and things like that. So, we'll just call this contact us. You don't really need to put any body unless you want to put an information like, this is how you contact us. And then we'll save that. So you have to save this basic information first. It has to already be a node for a web form features to take place. So if we were to view it as is this contact node, which is node 18, it would look like this. Oh, see, this is what happens when I leave the add the comment settings for write, read and write, it puts this button in there. So we'll get rid of that later if, if we want to. So to implement the web form, we would click the web form tab, which is right next to the edit and view. And then we would add things like name and date and email and everything else. Um, we can specify the type. For email, you would put email, obviously date, they can browse files, and you can make bigger text areas. For now, I'll just do text field because it's the name. We can make it mandatory and then we'll add it. This leads you to another page that just goes deeper into the different um, functions that that specific text field can have. It's kind of not this complicated, so I'll just press submit and not mess with any of the other stuff. And then we'll probably say, tell us about yourself. And then we can make this a text area. And then text areas, you can specify a size for them. I normally don't like messing with width and height because it takes a lot of um, guesswork, so Resizable is a good option, but yeah, width and height, you just have to keep guessing and see what fits your page, and then we can view it. And this is what we have for our name, and then they can submit it. And then you may be thinking, well, when they press submit, where does it go? Good question. Web form, again, you click emails, and then whatever is put into those web forms is sent to an address which you must specify in here. And you may want it to be info at itsaz.org or a combination of any other things. So definitely think about that. You can add multiple emails. It doesn't have to be sent to just any one person um, depending on the kind of form it is. One thing that is important is that CAPTCHA is put on the form so that robots don't sneak into the page and fill out these forms and then you're left with a bunch of jumbled gibberish submitted to you in the emails because you know the robots kept going through so we do in, we do have CAPTCHA installed it is a little hard to specify it on specific forms but um, if you have any questions about it then you can feel free to email me uh, sarah.albendat at gmail.com but basically that's how you edit your content it's very simple you see a page, you see a typo, you press edit and you go ahead and fix it or just make some little adjustments to the way that it functions and that's it